If you're looking for the simplest tutorial on how to use S-Log3, then look no further. Log profiles are notoriously known for being complicated and misunderstood. S-Log especially has had a reputation for not being a true log profile, and many have chosen not to use it because it's finicky, it breaks apart quickly, and on most older cameras, you can often get a better image out of a, like a Cine profile or HLG. However, when it comes to the Sony a7S III when it came out, they finally managed to cram 10-bit 422 footage paired with S-Log3, and it's pretty amazing. Ever since then, there have been numerous cameras that have come out with the same profile. Some that are even half the price of the a7S III. I'd love to say that I'm not bitter about it, but I'd be a liar. So let's say you were just picked up your first Sony camera and it happens to have S-Log3. I want to walk you through a simple process of exposing and grading S-Log3. Also, I actually have a LUT available now, but more on that later. If you're wondering how to do the same with S-Log2 on previous cameras like the a7 III, then check out one of my previous videos that I made where I break it down. If you want to skip the settings section and head over to the color grading, you can jump to this timestamp and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so this video is going to be actually pretty similar to my S-Log2 video, so if you haven't gone and seen that one, you should go watch it because I pretty much go over how to shoot S-Log2 and it's going to be very similar to this video. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a walkthrough of the settings that I have and how to use them. First thing you want to do, you want to go to number three, the exposure, and then you want to go all the way down to number six, the zebra display. So make sure your zebras are on. Zebras basically, they show when something is clipping in the highlights or when something is about to clip. I'm going to give you two different settings. Usually on S-Log3, the camera comes like this lower limit, and then it's at 94 plus. 94 plus is the max S-Log3 can read. When your highlights get to 94 plus, you'll start to see zebras. And then I bump up the exposure. Once it hits 94 plus, you will begin to see zebras pop in, just like that. You can see it on the water bottle, you can see it on uh, the white checker, which is like the brightest part of the color chart. So I'm gonna bring that back down and I wanna be at the base ISO. So I try to always stay at the base ISO just because you get like the least amount of noise in your picture. Since the zebras are at 94 plus, that is when S-Log3 starts to peak. What I like to do is I like to go down to 90. You know, it's not actually peaking on the video. It's about to peak. It just gives you a little bit of warning. Like, hey, this spot is really hot. It's going to peak in a minute. I will only pay attention to MM when it's really dark. Say if I was to go all the way down here and it's like at minus 1.7, I think around plus one to plus seven is a good range to be at. S-Log3 might kind of tell you to stay around 1.3 to 1.7. I just like to keep it at the base ISO and maybe around like plus one. I like to rely more on the zebras. Or if you have a monitor, you can look at the false color. And if you want a different setting, you can also set your zebras to a different setting. So C1 is a standard range uh, 70. So 70 plus five minus five. So now what it's looking at is where you want to get your skin tones. You want to expose for your subject face and you don't want to just expose for the entire image. You can switch up to that one. And that's a good way to work. Say if you, if you have a very bright light source in the background and then you want to add some light to your subject. And most of the time I just keep it around 90 and it works pretty well. Another thing that's really helpful to have is Gamma Display Assist. It's kind of buried deep into the menu, but if you go all the way to the custom on the right here on the yellow, and then go all the way down to number seven, Display Options, and then find Gamma Display Assist, you can turn that on and off and make sure that it is selected as S-Log3. And what it does is when you turn it on and off, it adds a conversion LUT that converts the footage from log to rec 709. I will just rely on zebras. I'll look at the back of the screen and make sure that everything just looks okay. You know, I try to 
keep everything pretty neutral. I don't like to have everything too bright. The nice thing about S-Log3 is that you can do that and you don't have to worry about shadows from getting too noisy because it's very forgiving in uh, S-Log3. And if you're wondering what the picture profile is, it's the default settings. It's S-Log3, black gamma is set to middle, S gamma 3 dot cine, saturation zero, color phase zero. Um, all of these settings, they mess with the colors. It messes sort of with the look of S-Log3 and I like to just keep everything neutral because there's so much flexibility in S-Log. You want to keep everything neutral so that you can play around with it a lot in post. So you just shot your first event using S-Log3. How did it go? Okay, let's get to color grading. So my color grading process is pretty simple because I just like a natural look. Sometimes I'll add filmic assets, but only to kind of like accompany the look that I already have. That's pretty natural. A tool that I use actually is Dehancer, where you can emulate film profiles really well. If you want to try Dehancer, you can actually click the link in my description and I'll give you 10% off. So S-Log tends to be pretty good once you add a conversion LUT and then do a few adjustments. So here's the simplest way to edit S-Log that I've found. Add four nodes, exposure, white balance, contrast, and then one for a color space transform. A color space transform takes your log footage and converts it to Rec. 709, a standard format for viewing on like screens. Go up to the effects panel and find color space transform and just drag it over top of that node. For input color space, change that to Sony S Gamma 3.cine. Gamma basically means contrast. Change this to Sony S Log 3. Output is what you want the conversion to be. Change the color space to Rec. 709. For gamma, that kind of depends on what you're doing. If you're editing on a Mac, change the gamma output to Rec. 709A. If you're on a Windows, Rec. 709 is fine. This actually reminds me, make sure you go to the project settings, color management, and change the timeline color space to Rec. 709A if you're on a Mac. This will make sure that what you're seeing is what you're getting. If your settings is different, the video will look really weird and like not contrasty when you export it. Everything else is done underneath the CST. If you do adjustments after the CST, things can get a little bit weird, so I just avoid that. You're gonna want to make sure that the white balance is correct. So. You can either do the eyedropper tool and select the whitest part of the image, but sometimes this gives you really weird results depending on the lighting. So I just like to use the offset wheel and make sure that the whites look white. You can do this by aligning all three of the colors in the waveform until they turn white. Or you can use the vector scope. So the vector scope is for skin tones. This is basically a color wheel showing saturation and hue. If you see this little blotch that's going toward red, you'll want to push it slightly to the right of the skin tone line. If you don't see this line, you can turn it on in the settings. There are so many ways to get white balance corrected, but I found these to be the most accurate ways of doing it. Try not to pay attention to anything else when doing skin tones other than like the absolute whites. It's important to get skin tones correct and then you can change everything else later. Contrast. You're gonna make sure that editable splines is turned on for this one. I like using the S-curve because it's a very accurate and a clear way to make contrast. Make sure you can see the waveform for this one. The goal is to stretch the waveform, but you don't want it to exceed 100, which means highlights, or zero for the shadows. Remember, S-Log3 caps out at 94, so keep this in mind when doing this. I like to keep my highlights around 90. Unless it's a light or the sun, then there's not much you can do about that. So firstly, let's make an S-curve. Click the highlight dot, and you'll see a spline. Move this towards the center of the graph and then bring it upwards. This will create a nice even curve and bring the highlights up. Now do the opposite for the shadows. Bring the dot towards the center and pull it down this time. If your highlights go above 100, grab the dot on the right and drag it down. Do this until the highlights are around 90. This is where exposure comes into play. If you find your image is still generally pretty dark, you can do one of two things. Firstly, grab the offset wheel to bring up the overall exposure. Do this and then go back to the highlights node if you need to go back down to like 90. So essentially what you're doing is you're just like stretching the waveform out. It's kind of like pizza dough. You're like stretching it out and then you're moving it along the uh, waveform to kind of get like a natural look. So from here, you can use tools like Dehancer to kind of add some character to it or you can add like other nodes to kind of like do that manually. So the last option is actually to use LUTs. So what LUTs do is that they actually help you get to a point that's usable or just like a nice looking point. Just kind of shortcut your way through all that manual stretching and pulling so that you don't have to worry too much about it. You know, like you can create your own LUTs. If you've done it in the past, you wanna just be like, I don't wanna do that again. You know, I don't wanna have to do that manually. You can create a LUT to kind of shortcut your way to a place that you need to be where you can start being more creative. I've actually created a LUT 
that I'm calling Natty because it gives your footage a natural but just beautiful look without having to do too many adjustments. There's a couple options here. There's one that simply adds the color adjustments that I've made to S-Log3 and then another one that adds like the, the contrast. I'll show you how to use it. So remember when we added a color space transform? We'll do the same thing on the end of your node tree. Add a LUT node right before the CST. And this is where you're gonna add my LUT. You can either do the one with contrast and then do all of your adjustments before that node, or you can do the one without contrast and do all of your own manual adjustments. It's up to you. I'm trying to give you some options. I actually really enjoy the LUT like as is because it gives my footage a nice look without having to do too many adjustments. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. I really hope that that was valuable to you. So I'll include my LUT in the description below and it's only seven bucks. And honestly, it gets your footage looking to a place where you could probably just deliver it like that if you really wanted to. If you wanted to be lazy, you know, you can do that. This LUT should work with any Sony camera that's been released after the A7S III, like the FX30 or the A6700. I really appreciate all the support for my previous LUTs on the Sony A7 III. Everyone who picked them up or purchased them, you're keeping this channel alive and motivating me to create more meaningful content to share with you. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one.